Battlefield 1 Elites in real life. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Elite classes in BF1 and compare them to their real life counterparts. It seems fairly hard to believe, but during World War 1, there were actually Elite soldiers that were given special weapons and armour in order to complete certain tasks. In Battlefield 1, DICE have tried to replicate that with the Elite classes. Of course, there's other reasons for them being in the game in terms of balance and things like that but I was always curious to whether they actually existed. And I've seen on Reddit a couple of little posts about them, but nothing including all the elites in one with a bit of history behind them. If you have anything extra to add, please leave it in the comments down below. Let's get into it, starting with the Flame Trooper. The Flame Trooper was one of the first elite kits I used in Battlefield 1, and although it's not so powerful in its current state, back at the beginning of the game it was very powerful indeed. Now I'm going to have an attempt at pronouncing the name of the flamethrower. The Washella Parat M1917, also known as the Wex, was a lightweight flamethrower introduced in 1917. It was later updated to the Model 35 and then the Model 41 and was used during the Second World War, so it is entirely possible that we could see such a design in the next Battlefield game, assuming it is a Battlefield World War II title. The short clip in the background is from Panzer Naka 43, you can find him on YouTube, pretty cool to see this thing in action. Again, linking this to Battlefield 1, you can see that the Flame Trooper was a real thing. Most people know this. It obviously didn't have more health than normal soldiers, but it would be very effective at clearing out bunkers, buildings, things like that. Of course, something that you don't get in Battlefield 1 that I wish you could do, shooting the tank on the back would be awesome if you were rewarded for like an accuracy bonus and then the flame trooper would explode. I think that would be really nice to have like if there was a certain weak spot because at the minute you just shoot them, bayonet them or rocket gun them, which all in all isn't too bad, but it would be cool because I remember we used to have it on the old Call of Duty World at War game where you had flame troopers too. Next up, we've got the Sentry MG-08. The Machine Gewehr 08, or the MG-08, was Imperial Germany's standard medium machine gun during the First World War and was used both by soldiers and within tanks. It's the same case in Battlefield 1. As far as I'm aware, there wasn't ever an elite Sentry during World War 1 that had incredibly strong armour and the ability to run around everywhere with a heavy MG-08 machine gun. Bear in mind, these things were very, very heavy indeed, and you couldn't just be sprinting around with them like you can in BF1. The components that make up the Sentry are real, however, and DICE have simply bundled them together for gameplay purposes. As I'll get into with the Villa Perosa Sentry later on, lobster armour was a real thing during the First World War, alongside other really weird stuff as well. As you can see from the photographs in the background, that is a selection of the wild and wacky armour. Remember, in the First World War, things were being developed very, very quickly. Technology was improving day by day, so the first designs you saw would obviously be a lot different to the ones you saw at the end of the war as technology developed. That being said, the Sentry was not exactly real, but the components that make it up definitely were, and it was possible to carry the gun as a single person. However, usually you'd have a team of people, at least two people, operating the MG-08. The third elite class in this list is the Tank Hunter. The Mauser Tankgewehr M1918 is an Imperial German anti-tank rifle and saw mass production and use until mid-1918. As in-game, and as the name suggests, the rifle was designed to counter tanks such as the Mark IV, Mark V and FT-17, that's the light tank in BF1. The 13.2mm round was capable of penetrating 22mm of armour, plating and could therefore shoot straight through the armour of tanks. That's pretty scary stuff. The weapon was in service from 1918 to 1933, and nearly 16,000 of the things were built, which I find very, very hard to believe, but that is the case. Interestingly, the tank of air required two people to operate, so the idea that you'd have a single elite class tank hunter is not really that realistic. However, the size and power of the gun is fairly represented in Battlefield 1. I've pinched a short clip from Jan76239 showing the sheer size of this weapon and the sound it makes whilst being fired. I would highly suggest you check out more of the video linked in the description. It's pretty crazy stuff. Next up, we have the Villa Perosa Sentry. Now, the Villa Perosa M15 was an Italian automatic firearm developed during the First World War, originally designed to be used by the second crew member of military airplanes. It was later issued to ground troops. As with the Sentry from earlier in the video, the Villa Perosa required armor that wasn't really used that much during the First World War. Farina armor is the armor in question, as far as I'm aware, and as you can see from the photographs in the background, it's quite similar to the outfit in BF1. 
Funnily enough, the Villa Perosa was actually not that powerful and wasn't ever really planned to be used against infantry and instead was aimed at taking down planes that were often made of wooden cloth. So as you can imagine, a low powered machine gun that fires a lot of bullets would be very effective against a plane made out of wooden cloth, which of course often planes were in the First World War. The photo you see in the background shows the Villa Perosa mounted on a bicycle. Maybe DICE could introduce a bicycle mounted elite class before they completely commit to the next game, although I know that's not going to happen, but it would have been cool to see it. Again, I've included a really short clip of a video. The full thing is down in the description. I suggest you go check that out as well. It's just showing how little similarities there are between the real life version and the game version when it comes to firing the weapon. Check out the rest of the video by Tony Joe Copper. It really does show you that DICE have sort of taken that gun and given it the battlefield effect, so it's slightly different to how it would have been in real life. And of course, you didn't have the Villa Perosa sentry, as you saw in the campaign, but the gun could have been used to shoot down planes in the First World War. Next up, let's take a peek at the Trench Raider. Trench raiding in the First World War was a feature of trench warfare and was the practice of making small-scale nighttime surprise attacks on enemy positions. As you can imagine, the trenches and positions in trenches were of good tactical value to each side, and trench raiders would cross no man's land in order to infiltrate enemy trench systems and take very limited kit with them in order to remain lightweight and mobile. Grenades would be used to clear out dugouts, while melee weapons enabled quiet and quick killing. In the case of BF1, the trench raider is equipped with a trench raiding club, but there were several different types. As you can tell in the background, some of them look really gnarly, and I definitely wouldn't be wanting to get hit by one of those. Finally, let's take a look at the infiltrator that operates the Martini Henry grenade launcher. Unfortunately, the Blanche Chevalier, also known as the Martini Henry grenade launcher, never saw any combat and therefore puts the infiltrator in the purely fictional category within BF1. The Martini Henry launcher was never issued, and in fact, there is no evidence to suggest that it was even trialed by the British War Office. So that's similar to weapons like the Hell Regal that weren't really a weapon that was used in the First World War, but designs were there, so why not include it in the game? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I've gone through the elite classes, trying to explain whether they're real or not. A few of them are, a few of them definitely aren't. Do you think elite classes will be coming to the next Battlefield game? That is a question I've been asking myself for a few weeks. I'm kind of hoping that we have some sort of elite player, maybe something that would add something more to the game, but I don't really like the idea of elite classes, I never really have, and I haven't liked the idea of pickup weapons since BF4 either. That being said, I'm sure DICE will add something weird to the next game. We've seen Levolution in BF4 and pickup weapons, we've seen behemoths and elite classes in BF1, I wonder what is next. Thanks for watching guys, if you did enjoy it, leave a like down below, and I'll catch you in the next video.